What's happening there guys and welcome back to another awesome video on our channel. Making a Murderer has gotten many updates on Stephen Avery, the series' protagonist in 2021. So as we made it out in 2022, here's all you need to know about Stephen Avery and his nephew Brendan Dassey. Stephen Allen Avery is a convicted American killer from Manitowoc County, Wisconsin who was falsely convicted of assault and attempted murder in 1985. Let's explore this man and dive into Stephen Avery 2022 update. Number 6. A Brief Recap of Steve's 2021 Case Stephen Avery is still serving time in jail for the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbach as portrayed in the popular true crime documentary Making a Murderer. After suing the Manitowoc County Police Department for a wrongful conviction for another crime in 2003, Avery has maintained his innocence and feels they framed him. Stephen Avery sought the Wisconsin Supreme Court to hear his case on Friday, August 27, 2021 after the appellate court had denied it a month before. The court dismissed Avery's appeal on July 28. Although the scenario isn't ideal, the protagonist of Making a Murderer still has alternatives. Not disheartened by the appellate court decision, it pointed out the precise paths that are still available for Mr. Avery's fight for freedom, Avery's lawyer Kathleen Zellner tweeted. We appreciate the thorough examination. Hashtag truth wins. Hashtag onward. In a letter dated April 23, 2021, Zellner accused Wisconsin of withholding critical evidence when additional witnesses came forward. This occurred after a new court filing on April 13th, which indicated that in the early hours of November 5th, 2005, a delivery driver witnessed Bobby Dassey with an unidentified beard guy in his 50s to 60s pulling a Toyota RAV4 the type Teresa Halbach was driving into the Avery property. According to this new finding, Stephen Avery's nephew, Bobby Dassey, Brendan Dassey's brother, was found near the crime site. Zellner tweeted on April 14th, Thank you for all of the information on the accomplice, Stephen Avery fans. We should be able to identify him very soon. Brendan's half-brother, Brad Dassey, then stated that his uncle, Avery, is innocent and that his stepmother, Barb Toddich, may be involved in the case. The most recent event occurred in June 2020 when Avery's lawyer submitted the Avery reply brief with the hopeful statement, We're going to win this. This was in reaction to the state of Wisconsin, which filed a 130-page petition after Avery's appeal, requesting that the court deny Avery a new trial. Number 5. Reason for Stephen Avery's Lawsuit Avery was sentenced to jail in 1985 for assault and attempted murder. He wasn't released until 18 years into his 20-year sentence after DNA evidence revealed he was innocent. Avery launched a $36 million lawsuit against Manawak County after his release in 2003 and earned a tiny portion of the money as a settlement. Avery was found guilty of Hal Bach's murder two years later and sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release. The Netflix series, which follows Avery's 2007 murder trial, has sparked international interest in the case and led to fresh evidence. Viewers learned of witness intimidation and evidence tampering on behalf of Manitowoc County, which Avery claims framed him for the murder as retaliation for a lawsuit he filed against them in 2003. Brendan Dassey, Avery's nephew, is also doing time for the murder. Number 4. Stephen Avery's Appeal in 2019 Kathleen Zellner, who appeared in the second season of Making a Murderer, ramped up her efforts to see that her client got the justice he deserved in 2019. Avery won a move to appeal in a Wisconsin circuit court in February 2019, which means the matter will be re-examined. According to Zellner's appeal, the bones recovered in the gravel pit on the Avery property, believed to be Halbox, were mistreated by police when they were provided to the victim's family in 2011 without informing the defense. The defense's request for a new trial was denied in circuit court in August 2019, forcing Zellner and her team to continue their appeal in Wisconsin's appellate court. Number 3. Has Stephen ever confessed to the murder? Stephen Avery has maintained his innocence throughout the proceedings. While speaking with documentary producers in late 2019, another convict confessed to Teresa Halbach's murder. Brendan Dassey, like his uncle, has always maintained his innocence, 
and his cause has gotten international attention and support thanks to the documentary. Lauren Nureder, his lawyer, tweeted in January 2021, your dedication hasn't faltered in the five years since hashtag making a murderer, neither have we. Number two, can Kathleen Zellner prove Stephen Avery's innocence? Kathleen Zellner, Avery's lawyer, requested in May 2021 for fresh DNA identification testing to be performed on bones that were found but never identified during the original investigation into Teresa Halbach's 2005 murder. The Wisconsin Court of Appeals, however, denied her motion, a decision she claims would have no bearing on her client's base. The appellate court did not dismiss the bone testing, they declined our motion to return the case to the circuit court to allow the bones to be analyzed, Kathleen, who has one of the best success percentages in overturning wrongful convictions in the United States, told Rolling Stone. The appellate court did not wish to introduce a fresh problem of bone testing to the proceedings. The main truth is that the appellate court is not banning Avery from performing the bone testing when the appeal is done or by arrangement with the next attorney general while the appeal is continuing, she said in an interview with Newsweek. Wisconsin elected a new attorney general later on. Avery and his nephew, Brendan Dassey, were convicted of Teresa's murder in 2005, which they have consistently denied. Making a Murderer's new season focused on Kathleen, Avery's new lawyer, as she attempts to overturn his conviction. In the first 2007 trial, prosecutors contended that bone pieces and tissue found on the Avery property were sufficient proof that they had burnt Teresa's corpse after the murder. On the other hand, the defense side has consistently claimed that this evidence was placed. Number 1. What do the documents say? According to an affidavit filed on Sunday, the delivery driver, Thomas Sawinski, said he was to Avery's salvage yard to hand off a newspaper when he observed the couple on the property with the car. A shirtless Bobby Dassey and an undeniable older guy suspiciously pulling a dark blue RAV4 along Avery Road toward the junkyard he recalls witnessing. According to the witness, he drove past Bobby Dassey, left the documents in the mailbox, and then turned around to leave the property. Bobby Dassey attempted to walk in front of his car to keep him from leaving the property, he says as he approached the RAV4. According to court filings, Thomas was within 5 feet of Bobby Dassey and had his headlights on. He then claims he was forced to escape from the property by driving into a shallow ditch to avoid him. He explained, I called out, paper boy gotta go because I was afraid for my safety. Bobby Dassey looked me in the eye and I could tell with the look in his eyes that he was not happy to see me there. What reportedly transpired after that is perhaps the most damaging. After seeing Teresa's vehicle that day, Thomas claims he realized the gravity of what he had witnessed and contacted the Manitowoc County Sheriff's Office. As a result, the paper says that the state withheld proof of Thomas' significant sighting. The documents state that the suppressed evidence was favorable to the defense and that because Bobby Dassey was a key witness, it would have destroyed Bobby's credibility entirely, established that Bobby was directly involved in the murder of Teresa, and established that Bobby planted evidence to frame his uncle. Kathleen's case has always revolved around the automobile. The automobile was hidden on the Avery family's property and might have housed a wealth of information about Teresa's murderer. Blood, for example, was detected on the car. Kathleen earlier speculated that the RAV4 might have been transported to the Avery property from another location where Teresa was most likely murdered. As a result, the sighting of Bobby and an unidentified guy in the car that matches Teresa's vehicle might very well support the argument that Stephen and Brendan were framed. This information is incredibly explosive since Bobby Dassey was constantly in Kathleen Zellner's crosshairs because searches revealed that his laptop was full of obscene and violent photos of women. She suspected his testimony against Stephen was false. Kathleen was playing with evidence in the case to show her client's innocence as seen in episode 2 of the Making a Murderer documentary series on Netflix. Stephen Avery was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of release in 2005 for the murder of Teresa Halbach. He has always maintained his innocence and is appealing for a new trial with Kathleen Zellner's support. Brendan Dassey, Stephen's nephew, was also found guilty of the murder. 
But let me know what you guys think about all of this in the comments down below. And I'll catch you guys later in another video. Bye now.